Hey, it's David. This is the second part of the video where I'm going to take out the MCU and going to show you exactly step by step how to do that. Um, this video is not meant for mechanics. They know how to do it. They can figure it out real quick. So if you watch this, I might over explain a few things and I have a lot of insert with photos showing where the screws are and all of that. It's just meant for people that are not that familiar and maybe need a little more guidance. Um, before you do that, um, first of all, watch the whole video to the end. That's the first thing. Number two, before you do that, please go and uh, click on the link that I have here in the description that shows what you do um, before you take out the MCU. Because um, once we take that little subboard out, the MCU um, basically becomes unavailable. It stays black. We have to put it back in the car, uh, but you can actually drive the car but it's going to be very limited, but you definitely don't have access to any kind of settings that go through the touchscreen, which is pretty much, you know, most of the car's features are controlled that way. And so there are certain settings you want to set before you take the MCU out, because once it's out, you can't change it anymore. For instance, like, you want to have the light on auto or things like that, the brightness of the LCD and things like that. All right, so um, without further ado, I'm going to... Uh, go ahead and take my car apart and show you exactly how that is done. So unfortunately we can't take the MCU out directly. We have to take out and remove some of the trim pieces from the dashboard around it that were kind of overlapping and um, we're going to show you step by step exactly how to do that to be able to get to the MCU and then take it out. Here are the tools you're going to need. Most important are the Torx 20 and 25 driver. I have long ones, short ones. An electrical one makes it a little faster in some cases. I have a little magnetic dish to put the screws in so they don't fly around. And then these airbags or these air wedges, they hold up the upper trim of the dashboard out of the way so you can take the MCU out. Last but not least, uh, you're going to need some of these trim removal tools. You can buy them as a set. I highly recommend them. Um, without them, it's going to be hard to not only take them out, but if you use anything like a screwdriver or a knife, you might scratch the trim pieces, which you definitely don't want to do. We're going to start by taking out the little caps, the end caps, these shields that are on both sides of the dashboard. You just pry them out with a tool. Uh, you can try it with your hands and fingers, but don't ruin them. Um, these are the antennas for the key fob, by the way. There we go. Um, if you want to keep them nice, put it on a nice surface, a towel or something. I don't have anything, so I'm just going to put it in my back seat. Under these shields is a small little silver screw. You take them out on both sides. The next thing is a screw that's kind of hidden under the dashboard. On the driver's side, you have to look under there. You see that little screw here, it's a Torx 20. You take that one out. Now we're gonna take out this entire piece here. We're just prying it out and then pulling on it. And these tools are really handy. Everything in here is just held by clips and it sounds really awful taking them off. You think you're gonna break something, but you're not. It's out as one. I just started. By just um, using that tool and opening these clips. And again, it sounds really terrible, and that's how it works. And you pull it forward, you pull it towards you. Here we go, that's it. Um, before you put them back on, uh, make sure all these metal clips are nicely aligned. Don't, don't have them crooked. Otherwise, it won't get back in. And so this whole piece here as well is one piece that comes off. I always start with that trim removal tool. Sounds terrible, but it's fine. Here we go. The whole thing comes out in here. One of those is a little crooked, so make sure you put them back in place. Okay, 
Nothing is broken. Good. Okay, so we want to move this whole um, dashboard thing here up in order to get this piece out, this piece out, and then the MCU out. And first you want to remove this little panel here, this plastic piece. It just comes right out. That's very small clips. You put it back here. And underneath are two silver screws, two Torx 20. This long tool doesn't work. That's why I got myself this little one here. So now we can carefully move this up. Um, this is held in place again by the same clips that are in here. So I have these two here, these air wedges. They're very useful for many purposes. If you uh, move this up here, here. You can just slip the airbag in right now and then it'll pop the whole thing up for you. So if you just wedge your airbag in there, yeah. it makes it really easy. This, and then you pump it up. Oh, magic. I'm gonna help a little bit here by hand. And the same thing here. You don't have to take the whole thing out. It's just enough to have the clearance here so you can take it out. Okay. If you want to be extra careful, you can put some masking tape over this here because there are some screws down here. And if you go in with a tool, you might scratch that. But um, it's my car, so I'm fine with it. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have to take this frame here off. Um, otherwise, this part doesn't come out, so I'm gonna do this now. And there's four screws there that comes yeah. out. All these screws are the exact same. So um, the dark ones, the black ones are all the same. So yeah, they're interchangeable. Some cars may have silver ones, but they're all the same. Yeah. Um, and everything is T20 except for the four holding the MCU in, yeah. which are T25s. Okay. Here's a little photo and the arrows point to where the screws are located to take that frame out. The bottom two ones are a little harder to get to. You have to remove that little apron that is hanging over the steering wheel shaft. You just pull that out and then you can reach the lower two screws a little easier. It helps if you move the steering wheel down and pull this one off here. You only need to undo the top one. You don't need to undo the bottom one. thing comes right out goes into the back so now you have access to this panel here and it's held in place by one two screws push this up and this comes right out it should here we go by the way, this is a good way to clean those air vents if you want to. I take this piece out here. This is held in place by several screws. There's one, two, three here. So, Antonio just told me there is a trick to put a towel underneath here. make sure when you pull this out that it doesn't scratch this one. Here's an overview of the screws again. The left vent of the passenger side, the right vent of the passenger side just above it. The three screws uh, just along the panel and then at the bottom a little bit hidden is the last screw you also have to take out.
Right, cool. There we go. Again, clean it if you want to. Now we're going to switch to the T25. There's one, two, three, four screws to take the MCU out. Technically, we should actually pull the fuse first, but we're going to save time and just do it that way. Under the hood is a small fuse box. If you open that, the 20 amp, the yellow one, is the one that powers the MCU. If you pull that, then the power is cut to the MCU. Here are the screws for the MCU. Uh, two thirds down are two screws to the left and the right. And then just above it, uh, it's a little hidden are two more. All right, four screws. Now you'll notice they are a little different. They're larger than the other ones, so there's no way to confuse those. Okay. So now we tip the screws out and you can take this MCU, you just pull it forward. I would um, recommend supporting it at the bottom. Depending on what car you have, the cables here are maybe a little longer or not so long, <laughs> depending on how it is. Uh, you can pull or not pull this far. You start with these on the side here. These just come off. This is the button for the um, flash light, uh, the flashers and the glove department and then I start from my side and each of these little um, you know what I'm gonna just take photos and then kind of put them in a video each of these connectors has a different way to unlock and it's kind of a pain in the butt um, so this one has a little one in the top so you push that the white one too this one has one in the bottom this one also has one in the bottom I believe and sometimes it's really hard to feel. These one again are on the top. <laughs> and don't worry about um, the car making a sound when you disconnect the MCU, it's freaking out. And you don't have to worry about remembering they are color, they're all color coded. Here's a photo of the backside of the MCU. You can see the layout of all the plugs and the colors. I think that's helpful when you take it out to see exactly where everything is. By the way, the three big plugs at the bottom, they're hard to see from the top because the cooling grill hides them. And so here are the photos with the arrows pointing to the locking mechanism. I found the big connectors come out pretty easy. The smaller connectors, they seem to be a little harder for two reasons. Number one, they seem to be stuck, if you, especially if you do it for the first time. But also it's hard to feel whether you're actually really getting that locking mechanism. So if you're struggling, that's uh, really uh, normal. Um, don't feel bad. It is hard if you do it for the first time. Okay. So we got the MCU out. I'm just going to put it in the back of my car. What you need is a, a Torx 25 and a Torx 20. And then later on we need a 6 and an 8. So we there's always these double screws here. You have to take those out. And again, they're all the same. Oh, then we need these. Ah, what am I doing? 20. So now technically you can take it off, but here is a little, what is that, an antenna? That's a Bluetooth antenna. Bluetooth antenna. Yeah. Mine has been taken off a few times, so it comes off really easy. You might need a knife or something to take it off. Another thing you can do is, if you just push it, ah. uh, this little zip tie, you can push it out of there often. Oh, and leave that clip on. All yep. right, cool. So then you want to go on this side, and it goes up this way, right? Uh, the other way. The other way? No, no, it flips the other way. It flips this way? Yes. Okay, then you're on the right side with the camera. And you want to be careful as you're opening that because when you flip it open, there are three ribbon cables that you have to be really careful about. 
So gently flip it open and then disconnect those cables. Let's see what if I get. Yep, one, two, three, four. There we go. I think your screen is starting to leak and adhese. All right, so as you said, be careful. So there's these two ribbon cables. This one comes off by pulling this little black back. And then it comes out. This one just comes out if you use your fingernail and just pull this up. Push in and pull out. Push in and pull up. Here we go. And this is a standard connector you might know from your computer. There's a little lock on the bottom and you just push that and then pull it out. Yeah, this little lock. All right. Again, there's two photos here that shows the locking mechanism. For this one, you push down and then pull up. And then this one is the other connector where you have to pull on the back side to unlock it. Getting to the heart of it, this is what we need. This is where we need a six and an eight. I don't know why they decided to use two different sizes. Actually, some of the newer cars actually have eight all around. Oh, okay. So now this is this kind of bar here or rail or whatever that's where it is in. So you want to um, tilt it up, tilt it and pull it carefully towards you very carefully and that's it. And the first thing you want to do is get a anti-static or what are they called these little bags? Yeah, anti-static bags. And you put that in and you mail it to Tony. And then um, once you have the new updated one, it goes back right the way we undid it. You push it carefully into that rail. Am I doing it right? Yep. There we go. And screw it back together. All right, so you take that little board out, you send it to Tony, and you're gonna have probably a good week for it to be mailed there, and Tony to put the new chip on, program it, send it back, and so on, before you can put it back. Um, but you should pack, you should put the MCU back together and put it back in the car, connect it all up, and put the screws in, because you can actually drive your car. It's gonna be very limited because the MCU will not turn on, so you don't have the touchscreen interface, you can't do anything. Um, so you lose a lot of functionality, like, you know, AC doesn't work, you have no maps, no music player. Um, but the car drives. Uh, the basic functionality is there. You, it even charges, it even supercharges, so if you actually need your car, you can use it. Uh, there is a second reason you should do, you should put the MCU back in, and that's because the car has a 12-volt system and a small 12-volt battery. And if you don't have the MCU present, the car does not charge or top off these 12 volt batteries so after a day or two or maybe three days that little 12 volt battery is going to die and then you have a bigger problem so definitely put the MCU back into the car connect everything up even if you don't plan on driving the car all right so that's um, all I have for today I'm sure there's a ton of questions please feel free to leave them in the comments I'm going to monitor it and try to answer it and also the link to Tony's service uh, where you can get the chip replaced and everything uh, is in the description. So thanks for watching and see you next time.